Hi guys, Domingo here and today I'll show you how to set up your home router like a bro. Basically the way I do it. And my way is a four letter word. T, H, A and T. Or that. Not this, but that. So let's start. First up T. T is for TSA, which is another acronym. And don't worry, keep your clothes on and hold on to that sharp object. We are not at the airport. TSA here stands for throw stuff away. Now let's see what we can throw away. Of course, first is the plastic wrapping. I don't know why we actually need this. So up it goes, straight to the ocean. And then we have the CD. I mean, who use CDs anymore? And then we have this quick startup guy. Seriously, the startup is so much quicker without it. So in the end, we all need just the router itself, the power adapter, and the included network cable. In fact, we need two cables for the job, so I bring here another one. And the box, it can go too. You can throw all of these away. And by the way, by throw away, I mean you recycle them. Now we can move on to the second part, H. H stands for hooking up the hardware. Now, hooking up the hardware is actually very simple. First, you have to connect the router to the power using the power adapter. If you cannot do this, you have a more problem than even I can solve. Now, the second is that you hook up the router's Ethernet port or one port to an Ethernet source. This port right here is called one port because it's supposed to connect to a wide area network, which is the World Wide Web or the Internet. At home, you hook this port to your DSN or cable modem, but here, I have to hook it to the CNET corporate network, which is why I have to use this long cable. The next step is this LAN port. It's, they call it LAN port because LAN stands for local area network, which means you can connect devices and computer to the router using network cable. In this case, I'm going to connect this MacBook Pro. Now, this is the same for most of the router on the market. All of them, almost all of them, come with one one port and four LAN port. Now let's move on to the next part, which is A, and that's for access the web interface. Now it's called the web interface because you can use any web browser for the job, such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or the other thing for Microsoft. Now this part can be done with any router on the market except for those from Apple. And that's because Apple is the only company that does not provide a web interface for their routers. To access a router's web interface, we need two things. The router's default IP address and the login information. It's quite easy to find out the router's default IP address. That's because almost all the time they come in this format. 192.168. Dot x.1, dot with x being either 0, 1, 2, 3, 10, or 11. Or on a computer that connected to the router, you can find out by going to the command prompt and use the command ipconfig. Here, the default gateway IP address is the IP we want. Now, for this particular router, the default IP address is 192.168.10.1. So let's type that in the address bar of the web browser. Now, most of the time, the username is admin, and the password can be anything like admin, the word password, the word default, 1234, or left blank. In this case, I know the password is admin, the same as the user. And voila, now we have access to the router's web interface. We can move on to the last part of this guy, the second T, which stands for Tinkering. Now, different vendors have a different web interface, but they are all very similar. And most of all, they are very easy to figure out if you speak English. Which means, if I can do it, I'm sure you can. For example, here with this particular one, you can follow the wizard, it shows you step and step. Or you can go to network to change the basic setting of your network. Or you can go to wireless 2.4 to change the 2.4 gigahertz network. Or go to wireless 5 gigahertz to change the setting of the 5 gigahertz wireless network. Very simple. Now, the reason I will encourage you to tinker away because you can always reset the router to the default factory setting. You can also back up the existing setting and then restart that later. To reset to the default setting, you can use a web interface or you can use a small pin like this 
and press on the reset button of the router. All of them has one. Just press it in here for about 10 seconds and the router will go back to the default setting. And that means you don't have to worry if something goes wrong. For more detailed information on this guy, make sure to check out the riotpartsia.com where you can also find a list of the default IP address and default login information for most vendors on the market. And after that, you're allowed to get yourself a customized t-shirt that reads, I am pro because I know. I approve that message. And that's because I am Dom Ngo. And for the very first time, this has been a quick guy on that from CNAP TV.